Smith and his commitment to ball security. <laughs> well done, Wilds. <laughs> Uh, he's now turned the ball over in nine straight games, which leads the league. Here he is after losing to the Bucks. I think overall, um, I just have to play better. I got to, I got to play better. Um, I have a ton of opportunities uh, to lead the offense and really play complimentary ball, and it starts with me on that side of the ball. And I would get down like we did. We got to help. The, I have to help, help the defense out. Uh, does Philly have a Jalen Hurts problem? Well, they have a, they have a lot of problems, but all, now he's one of them. He, they used to have problems other than him. Now he is one of their many problems. And we'll talk more about their many problems later in the show. But on Hurts, and Sirianni after the game tried to say, he's like, yeah, strip sacks don't count as fumbles. Essentially, and that's sometimes true. You know what I mean? There are certain times where there's instant blindside pressure and you don't hold against it. Every this ain't one of them. As my old partner Chris Carter used to say, where did where did you think the guy went? The guy, the guy who you avoided and went right behind you. Like, where did you think he went? And so, but this is, it's not a one game or a four game thing. Since the Super Bowl, here is Jalen Hurts. 27 turnovers. He has played 22 games. The passer rating, below average. Like, it's just... So it, my answer is yes, because he is play, paid like he is supposed to be part of the solution, and he is the most turnover-prone player in the NFL right now. There's no denying it. Right now, he's a problem. You know, like he, he's just, as Nick said, since the Super Bowl, he hasn't played well. And when you look at his career, he's at his four-plus seasons. He's had one good-slash-great year. That's it. Now, he's not, he hasn't fallen off like Carson Wentz, but he is struggling. He doesn't look confident, and we're going to get into Sirianni. Sirianni seems like he's lost his confidence as well when you watch him in the press conferences. Yeah. But we're like, I don't, Jalen Hurts is blowing it right now. And I know, again, we can talk about the coaching. You want to talk about the offensive coordinator. Last year, he had Brian Johnson, who was like a fam longtime family friend. That didn't work out. Now, Kellen Moore, that's not working out. You look at the talent around him. He's got one of the best offensive lines in the league. I know the receivers were out yesterday, yeah. both of the top ones. But still, generally, you got a great receiving core. You got one of the best running backs in the league, and he's not getting it done. So I, I think he can turn it around and play better. But just like people are looking at Sirianni and their defense and yeah. Vic Fangio, and I, you got to look at Hurts now, too. Yeah, you, you hear it in his voice at the press conference. Before He always says the right thing. Before there was conviction in his voice, I'm yeah. going to get this fixed. Now it's almost like, like he's looking for an answer to how he's going to get it fixed. And I'll, I'll just show you some more statistics that, that reinforce what Nick said. And it kind of reminds you of, of what they went through with Carson Wentz. When you look at his big season, his TD percentage, his interception percentage, and his turnovers, okay, high TD percentage. Yeah, eight turnovers and then all of that year. You go, yeah, you go to the next year. Now you're down in TD percentage, your, your interception percentage, uh, yeah. same thing. And, and, and right on down the line, we're at 20 uh, turnovers last year. In 2023, we're already at seven this year in, in 2024. Yeah, and I think those interception yeah. percentage numbers are transposed. Yeah, the, it was 1.3 in 2022. 1.3, the 2.8. And 2.8 last year. Yeah those, yeah, those should be flipped on the other side. Yeah. But there's been this, this regression in every category, significant category, and they're just looking for answers, and, then, and not a lot have come. Okay. Uh, much for handling success, the Jets put up nine points at home in a drizzle. Uh, <laughs> lost to the Broncos. We talked about it like it I was know. Thunderstorm. It was not. I know. It was unbelievable. <laughs> it was not that bad. Uh, lost to the Broncos, and now two and two. Afterwards, the team's five false starts became the talking point between coach and quarterback. Take a listen. We got to figure it out. Um, whether or not we're we're good enough to handle all the uh, uh, or ready to handle all the cadence, it, cadence had not been an issue um, all camp. Um, felt like our operation had been operating pretty good. Uh, obviously, uh, today it took a major step back. It's one way to do it. The other way is hold them accountable. I mean, we haven't had an issue. We've had one false start. Morgan had one false start, I believe, until this. So, you know. It's been a weapon. We use it every day in practice. We don't, you know, we rarely have a false start. And to have, I don't know, five today, it seemed like, four or five. 
Yeah, that's, that seems like an outlier. I don't know if we need to make mass changes based on, you know, kind of an outlier game. Okay, now, of course, Sala then walked it back today. Oh, the shot. He said, but from a cadence standpoint, that's part of what makes us who we are. Yeah. And we're going to continue to always push the envelope Certainly on that. Here. You don't so the pendulum it. swinging all over the place. Your reaction? My reaction is I am legitimately irrationally angry oh. at media colleagues, some of whom literally or figuratively wave Jets pom-poms, who yesterday around 5 p.m. were like, you know, they might have a coaching problem, you think? Like, the three years before didn't let you know that, it, or the trying to get rid of the offensive coordinator and failing didn't let you know that maybe, just maybe, the Jets coaching staff isn't totally buttoned up. But then also, I, I got yelled at all offseason because I'm like, Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, good players, like them. And I'm like, if you're not calling these two of the most dynamic superstars in the league, well, it's quarter of the season. I'd like to see Garrett Wilson have 60 yards. Brees Hall yesterday, I think, had 10 carries for four yards. Uh, if everyone's mad they didn't give Braylon Allen the ball at the goal line, not that they gave it to Brees Hall. Like, this, this Jets team and, and Aaron, who played poorly yeah. in, a, in a – listen, the conditions were bad. And if you didn't watch the game, you knew it because they brought it up at every chance they had in the press conference, whether it was the coach or the quarterback. But you play outdoors in New York in, in professional well, football. Well, he doesn't practice. The, I, I, no, I get yeah, that. Yeah, um, yeah. But them talking, Coach, last week about, it's, you know, we learn to deal with success and then we figure out how to dominate. You beat Will Levis in a game you played poorly and the worst team in the league, Jacoby Brissett. And if they're not the worst team in the league, it's because Will Levis' team is. Like, I just – and, they, and, and so – I'm just, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm shocked that people are shocked. I'm shocked that people are like, oh, the team coached by Sean Payton with a really good defense found a way to keep it close and steal a win from the team coached by Robert Sala with supposedly a really good defense. Yeah, the, the whole idea about learning how to deal with success after, what, three games is, Thank you. I mean, it's, that's ridiculous to talk about <laughs> in general. Yeah. But, but forget about that. This is one of the few times that I'll probably say this. I absolutely agree with Aaron Rodgers. Wow. I absolutely agree with what he yeah, said. Twist. And, and, and here's, here's why. Because Aaron Rodgers throughout the course of his career has been outstanding with cadence. Yep. He leads the NFL in, in touchdowns off of free plays. Yep. Okay? So it's been a huge weapon for him. Now, outside of that, he uses it to slow down the pass rush. He uses it when you, when you ha can stagger cadences. It keeps the defensive line off, off um, rhythm. It allows him to see blitzes. It allows him to adjust to wide receivers. All those things. So, so the, even the remote idea of taking that weapon away from him is, is it, it doesn't make any sense. And, and let's talk about a bigger problem. Can we pull up the sacks? He was sacked yep. five times yesterday. Okay, over the last five years, he's only been sacked a total of uh, six times. Six times six has games that, with five Six sacks. games has that happened. That, to me, is the bigger problem, and that's tied into Cadence, too. And I know Nick loved the, the, the draft pick of the offensive lineman, you know, the tackle in the yeah. first round, and there's four things. Yeah, they brought in a million offensive linemen. I get it. Give Joe Great. Douglas more time, Coach. I, he's going to build at, the offensive line. At some line. point, <laughs> it, this is going to happen. But, but in Rodgers' defense, now, I don't like the way he says it. He obviously, it's like when you don't like your boss and that's the, the tone that you answer every question with and everything involving him. You know, the tone I don't love, but the, the message is spot on. This is a pre-snap penalty. It has nothing to do with anything but <laughs> discipline. So you need to be disciplined and be able to use cadence. Yeah, I'll say, first of all, that's a horrific loss. A horrific loss. They should be three and one. Now you got Minnesota, Buffalo, and Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. I, I think they sh they can go one and two in those games, yeah. but obviously all three are losable. But even if you go one and two, be you're three, you're and, three four. and four. You're going to be three and Whereas four. Whereas you could have had yeah. built up a really Sorry. nice record. So that's an unforgivable loss. All right. Now, I got to be honest, and I, I have no idea what the relationship is between Rodgers and Salah. Obviously, we see hints. I think hints. you can guess. We see, well, we see hints that it's not great, but I also think the media is overblowing a little Salah said. Now, when I, I heard it like everybody else, the question asked to Rodgers, 
And Robert Sala said maybe you guys need to, you know, change the cadence and stuff like that. So, Rodgers, I agree with you, Coach. Absolutely right. Like, that's a weapon of his. Probably the best ever to use that as a weapon. So, you.